Uh, okay, folks, we are recording. It's Gordon Einstein churning out high quality videos with high quality guests. Again, I'm your hopefully favorite Dubai crypto and blockchain attorney. You know, with pursuing my avocation uh, producing these cool videos. Uh, today, I want to bring on and welcome. I'm going to say this correctly, I hope. I meant Rafai. Did I do this correctly? Yes. The yes, French Gordon. version, as I was instructed. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Hey man, I'm just I'm just doing the, my best. I'm just a nice, you know, innocent kid from Los Angeles. You're amazing, bro. You're amazing. Just doing my best. Um, you know, like my own last name, I didn't even know it was technically pronounced Einstein until I went to Germany. And I went through my life uh, mispronouncing it as Einstein. So you know, I mm -hmm. live and learn. No, the anyway. German way is Einstein. Yeah. Yeah, Einstein. It's like, oh, okay. Now they tell me. I probably go through my whole life doing it okay. wrong. Okay. Um, uh -huh. so I was a very interesting guy. He's very friendly. I, I've known him for a few years, not super well. So maybe this is a chance for me to get to know you better. Um, I think okay. you're a fixture, I think in the, in the local crypto blockchain and technology community, you're very prolific. Um, if I understand it correctly, you're involved in the disrupted conference, which we'll talk more about. And so thank you for coming on the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Welcome, welcome, and thank me. Thank you for having me, and uh, thanks to everybody who will be listening and uh, paying attention to this. Exactly. Thank you for your attention. I, I like that. I'm going to use that going forward. All right. So b before we get into what's going on now, I always like to get like every superhero has an origin story. You know, every crypto hero has somewhere they came from. Um, and I, I just want to get. Some I didn't so, know we are on the Marvel show, so okay. <laughs> you know, you're Wolverine, man. <laughs> you, you are. Um, wh where are you from? Where, where are you born? Well, I was born and raised in Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia. Okay, very nice. Uh, and, yeah, and but originally my parents are from Alexandria, Egypt. So, Egypt yes. Yeah. Nice. And then, how, how did they come to? How did it come to pass that they came to Saudi? Uh, well, uh, I, they were working there. So my, my father was a me mechanical and electrical engineer. My uh, mother was an oral surgeon and a dentist. And uh, they started their uh, practical career, professional life there in, in Saudi back in the early 80s. And this is where they got lucky with me. So <laughs> yeah, like you're, you're very modest. I, li I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and did he grow up in Saudi? Yeah, I was uh, born and raised in Saudi, and I've been like we were ping ponging a lot, mm -hmm. like traveling all 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 the time. So I was not constantly there, or you can say constantly there was a lot of breaks, you know, like traveling back and forth mm -hmm. uh, to Alexandria sometime as well. So high school and college was there before traveling again and switching after uh, my, my my university into other fields. So I, I we, we used to I used to change schools since I was in since kindergarten, you know, like and since primary school. So, so every year was in a different school, sometimes even changing wow. the semesters between the semesters. So one semester would be at a school, the other semester would be at another school and dif different curricula. So switching between the British to the American to the international curriculum. So it, it, I got used to this kind of moving a lot, creating new friends on the go, uh, quick and fast paced. Mm -hmm. So it became like a second nature to me that I don't I don't feel this kind of homesick, you know, like a, this is just when, whatever are my feet steps, uh, I feel home, I feel comfortable, I feel like, okay, so nice. what? Super, yeah. and the, the, the moving around was because your parents were on different assignments or different jobs or had, or had different businesses? Or uh, I think we were you know, on different minds. Okay. Oh. Yeah, my 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 mom sometimes used to want to like to sometimes like settle down. My dad was always wanting to travel, and so we had this kind of you know pulling back and forth and ping ponging. Mm -hmm. But the good thing that we're always like discussing and managing and arranging everything together and deciding and everything together. So. It That's was cool. good. Like we, we we used to just let them make the decisions while we're doing whatever we're, what we are doing. So. Wow. So uh, I, I like what you're saying. It gives you a very flexible approach, and you don't you don't you know you're you're not homesick because the world is your home. 
So you're always in the world. Yeah, yeah. Because I get this question a lot when people say like, yeah, because uh, like I, 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 people start asking me, where do you feel home? Because I've 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 lived and traveled to to, to a couple of places. Uh, between Riyadh, Alexandria, to Beirut in Lebanon, London in Edinburgh, in Scotland, uh, where I, I did my uh, my entrepreneurship journey and some of my studies, my postgraduate studies. So basically, I'm a mathematician and a computer engineer. That's what so I was getting. So my my yeah my my major in high school was mathematics, and then I joined the uh, engineering uh, college. Mm -hmm. I was a computer engineer and. Also, changing things and being on the on the pace of two parallel things, which are totally different in life, was was kind. I think of one of the of the effects of being moving and changing the the the, the scene mm -hmm. of your life a movie a lot. Like every scene is totally a different pace, a different rhythm, a different tone, and a different role that you. So sometimes it goes on high frequency, sometimes on low frequency, sometimes fast, sometimes slow, sometimes stand still, sometimes like it's just as if you are in a in an amnesia or sometimes lucid dreaming. You know, like it, yeah, yeah. it was just like it, yeah, it takes you everywhere. So while I was, for example, in in high school studying mathematics, on the afternoons I was um, uh, most of the time scouting. You know, like I wasn't a scout. So like, in the, like boy in, scouting? In the, uh, yeah, like boy oh. scouting, yes. Oh, okay. so yeah. So I was I was in a British English school. In the afternoon, I was scouting in a French Catholic school. Uh, so for, uh, speaking English in the morning, French in the afternoon, Arabic in the evening at home. In the weekends, I was uh, more of an artistic person. So I used to paint and draw. I used to teach painting and drawing as well. So it so was long. like, no, kind of I, I was a like my, my, yeah, <laughs> it was fun. You know, it was fun camping and going here and there, and it, it was fun. You know, amazing. And so, and there's a famous expression that for every every language is another soul, and here you yeah. are operating in at least three languages. If I heard you correctly, there's at least English. Yeah, I was like a trilingual person. Yeah. Wow. And do, do, do you still maintain fluency? Well, I mean, obviously English, but do you still maintain, and I mentioned Arabic also, do you still maintain your French fluency? Well, not as much as I used to be back in the days, but I still, like, if you, if it just, yeah, you pop it up, it, it just gets turned on by, by default, you know. Nice. Very good. Okay, so in, in college, you did math and something like computer science and engineering, and, and then... Yeah, what happened? It was more of the intersection of electrical engineering and computer science. So okay. the software and the hardware and how they both work together. So we used to study from the hardware design on the chip level, on the motherboard level to the to the pressure level. I designed a Pentium one processor with my own hands. Like wow. with every single wire, where it's coming from, where it's going. Uh, to the uh, design of the operating system and the programming of the operating system and the kernels and the interaction on the higher level of the of the uh, of the uh, computer system, the computer architecture organization. So are, are you database. one of those assembly guys? Mm -hmm. are, are you one of those guys that was working in assembly with the opcodes and everything? Else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to wow. code in almost eight languages. This is what I have studied across my whole computer engineering from the assembly language to up when you go to the visual basic to the C to the C sharp to the Java to the even the low level languages like the assembly VHDL, mm -hmm. like all, all, all this kind of, of, of programming, uh, database systems, artificial intelligence, pattern recognition, re robotics, communication signals. College was more of a panoramic uh, journey, I would say. Okay. You, you start specializing in especially computer engineering and computer science after you graduate. It's yes. like the medical school. You graduate as a general practitioner and then your master's, you, you start to, to specialize whether in optics or surgery, surgery or whatever it is what you're going to specialize in. Engineering is more or less the same thing within every specialization. So you, you get the panoramic uh, kind of view in the in college, in your undergrad. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and then you take it into a specialized and a more laser focused uh, career in your masters or in your practical uh, so, so, so tell me tell me your path after college and where no well while while i was in college as well like the same as in high school that i was studying mathematics and on the side, I was uh, doing painting and uh, drawing and landscaping and portraits and architecture, and mm. it, it was more uh, switched uh, like on the on the both sides of the spectrum. You know, in college it was okay, the same. You got thing the left brain well. and you got the right brain. Uh, both, right? <laughs> yeah, I remember my 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 mentors, the people that I was lucky enough to look over the shoulders and to shadow and learn from. I used to coach and mentor me when I switched into finance. They used to call me this uh, um, spiritual romantic geek genius. And I was like, guys, th- this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's a nice compliment. Spiritual, spiritual I don't know to take genius. it as a, as a, a, yeah, I don't know to take it as a compliment or as a freak, you know? <laughs> it sounds a little bit that like things are not working out here. In the right way, but anyway, it was it was like uh, fun from them. Well, look, so, I, I, yeah, I knew uh, you in 2024, and things worked out. So I I can go back in time and tell your teachers to just relax. You, you got to yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I I, I kind of like kept the same kind of uh, rhythm of life. So I was studying computer engineering, and in the summer, I was like. This was my summer job. I was I was running uh, like entertainment and hospitality industry. So I was managing some of the private beaches mm-hmm. and the North Coast and on the Red Sea. And then I was hosting the uh, uh, concerts for uh, some of the most famous uh, regional singers and international singers and, uh, you know, the e, um, DJs and EDM music concerts. Mm-hmm. So b- back in these days... It was like the, the hype of EDM, you know, Tomorrowland and, you know, like and, and all the DJs like Tiesto, uh, Armin Van Buren, Paul Van Dyke, Eric Morello, Antoine Clamont. Oh my gosh, like, you, you, I, I can't believe you said that. I, I literally just had on the screen, I was showing my wife, uh, Paul Van Dyke. Um, uh, Paul Van Dyke is a living life. legend, like, yeah. I say, I, I, I got to do this. I'm going to do something completely unusual for this podcast. Don't go anywhere. Dear audience, don't go anywhere. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> I know. This We're going to play some music now. You're going to be DJing for us. Just for a moment, if I if I can do this without screwing things up. Hold on here. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can do this very... Here we go. You know? Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 sound is not coming very clear and very loud, but oh, we Dyke, can man. like uh, you got me, you got we, 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 we can recommend a playlist for the for for the audience after the show. Like we can share a link, some links with them to to yes, to to Armin Van Buren to all the the amazing guys back in the days. I uh, still like well, most of them like still in in the. We're still still maintaining Paul, like Paul, a lot Paul of. Is, I checked fifty two and he's still playing. Yeah, yeah, he's still playing. Yeah. So, anyways, sorry, it started to derail, but you know, it's a weird coincidence. You're mentioning this. And I was just looking at the video this morning. Okay, so you're having the time of your life. You're putting together these amazing events with these great DJs at the height of the EDM craze. Well, it was for me, you know, a way of getting my energy out. I was doing this only through, during the summer. So mm-hmm. every year, like, and because it was the season where where we are in the summer, you're managing these private beaches, and then I started doing my own uh, this kind of agency advertising and PR agency on okay. the side of my study. So I was running all these shows, um, working with all these production companies who are doing the world tours for Shakira, Robbie Williams, Madonna, Ricky Martin, you mm-hmm. know, like Craig David, you, you, you name it. Like it was like on the world tours of these guys and then I switched into the EDM music, you know, Tomorrowland and, and all the uh, sensation white. And it was, it was like amazing fancy days, you know, like you're just having fun, hooking up with models and directors and singers and stars. And you're just staying in your place and you know, like, like oh yeah. And I, <sighs> it was just like, you know, it was the euphoria, you know, it was more of the ego of you're, you're still a young guy, you know, in college and, 
you just for the achievement, you know, yeah, I did this. Yeah, I know that. And I, 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 I am personally proud of you. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, bro. All right, so go on, go on. Keep, keep moving forward. Uh, I, I, I'm proud that you're proud of me. So, yeah. <laughs> Super. That's another credential that I can put on my wall. So yeah. Something. All right. So then. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, and then um, closer to my graduation, I decided to switch my career totally from engineering and go into business and finance. Okay. So it was like a dramatic shift, you know, like. And I was always like, even even my mom, like, right, she, she wanted me to continue in engineering and stuff and to do my master's in engineering, which I totally went against that and I did an MBA. So even in high, in high school, she wanted me to specialize in biology, I specialized in mathematics. In college, mm -hmm. she wanted me to go to the medical school, I went to engineering. So it, so it was like, <laughs> I'm always, you know, on, I had a very democratic parents, you know, even right. if they don't like it, they, they, they let you do whatever the hell you want to do. So you don't blame them and say, oh, you forced me on this or you forced, twisted my arm on that, which was pretty good and pretty... Well, I say it's pretty good because it lets you learn things and take responsibilities for your decisions and actions and steer your own ship. Mm -hmm. You know, they are there to help. They are there to anchor whenever you need them. But if you just want to like run it into the storm, they will let you run it into the storm. And hallelujah, yeah, let's just go. <laughs> it, was, it was a funny, it was a funny life. Yeah, it was a funny life. So yeah, I decided to switch and then I started preparing myself to the, to the transition from the engineering background to the business background. So I did my European business competence license in business from uh, Krems, Danube, Danube University of Austria. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, to, just to get did the pre-masters, the pre-MBA, so I get acquainted more in depth with the business topics and and I, I did very good in business. I found like I'm studying business. I was like the only candidate in the uh, in the license mm. in the European that was coming from engineering. I was only okay. me and another guy who was coming from law background. He was a lawyer, mm -hmm. studied law, and the, all the rest were business grads and commerce and trade grads. And uh, for for the record, I was a top scoring candidate. Like I I, I love business. Like I, I attained the highest score in that. And I remember the professor. At that time, on one of the subjects, he was from Texas, and he uh, uh, focused my attention and brought to my attention that the most successful people in business are engineers. And I was like, okay, that's a good start. That's a good, that's a good push from this guy that well, when I'm entering into the business education, sure. knowledge, and world, to, to give me this kind of confidence a little bit. Oh, you're an engineer. You're going to do great. And I was like, oh, okay, I will take this as a... As a whatever, or as a prophecy, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah. you it's call it. It's a sign from up there. Yes. Yeah, and then I did my diploma in business from uh, University of Cambridge, the UK, and uh, yeah. I majored into marketing and human resource management. What a change! Uh, I yeah, that was especially, really especially uh, the that, resources that, side. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a dramatic change, and then I switched into totally something different. So I got the grasp of business. Mm. I attend merit in marketing, and I think uh, th this was due to my advertising, entertainment, commercial, you know, like, because when we used to do all this music uh, concerts and festivals and the, all these star shows, of course, there was a lot of engagements with the uh, post-video productions, video clips, uh, photo shooting and modeling, and, you know, like, you get to, to interact with all this kind of marketing commercial how how to have to have to, to, to handle the masses how to to, to manipulate the mass the mass control of the of the audience and mm -hmm. and how to position things in the in, in certain ways so when you engage with the with the with the um, um, like music especially the music uh, the ed as well we used to do like other thinkers like it's not only edm like some pop stars and some okay. like this you, you get to have this marketing dna in you you know of course okay so th that was actually your yeah. before your studies in a way yeah yeah you get to, to know how to run a show you know yes you, you okay, know behind the scary. scenes how to pull it off and how it really works like you you, you see the kitchen how it's cooked 
So uh, it, it I, I, like, I, I, yeah. Did that take? Did that remove the romance, or did that, did that just add more depth? It add more depth, and there is hell lot of another kind and a different angle and a different lighting of romance sure. behind the stages. Like the, the, and it depends on you how you look at it. You okay. Know, yeah, sure. It, it, it depends. So, so, so there are different kind of romance behind the scenes. So, yeah. Interesting. But maybe okay, I'm so just supposed to like the, uh, I, I, know, I know at some yeah. point. Yeah. Wait, for the audience, at some point, this could end up with you being a master of tech and crypto and events here in Dubai. Wow. Uh, well, that, that was very strange as well, because like um, uh, while I was studying business and finance, because I did as well the PMT, the professional market trader license. Mm -hmm. And then I became a trader. Wow. Okay. A financial trader, F F FX what, and money market. When was this? This was my, after I, uh, while I was switching into business and I finished my studies of the the business license and my Cambridge diploma and the PMT, the professional market trader certificate, so I then went yeah. into, uh, this was just 2010 when okay, I so finished this after stuff Bitcoin, and it was, shortly after yeah, Bitcoin, right and then. this was the, the, the sparking light or fire of the Arab Spring. Yes, I remember. And then I went into the army. I was a lieutenant troop leader in the Air Defense Forces, just in the middle of all this action of the Arab Spring. <laughs> that was like, whoa. Sorry, from, in, in Egypt? Know. Yeah, it was back in Egypt before I traveled. It was within my time when I was in um, between Egypt and Lebanon in Beirut. I lived a little bit in Beirut in Lebanon. It was beautiful, you know, Wait, all so the you, beauties. You, you're, 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 you're in Egypt when Mubarak gets overthrown. Muslim yeah, brothers. at that time, yeah, at that time, I was called for my military service, and yeah. I was nominated as a lieutenant troop leader in the air defense forces, and I was like, whoa, going from all this, you know, like uh, concerts and beaches, and you know, like Palm, Las Vegas, Germany, Belgium, you know, like what, mm -hmm. Tomorrowland and Charme Sheikh and Hergada and yeah. all this amazing stuff into the army and like whoa, that's a totally different world, and you are a lieutenant troop leader, you're in charge of soldiers and missiles and firing battalions and it's like and the world is going crazy you're not just like in the regular days the quiet days I remember. you have a president who just stepped down and the whole thing is in chaos and the whole region is on fire you know like it's not just your country it's almost from the ocean to the gulf so it was it was like it was intense it, it, it was fun to be honest, like I had a lot of fun that period, like when I remember it, of course, it, I, I was not feeling all that fun while I was in the middle of the action. But after it passed, I was like, oh, I look back at it. And I was like, that was fun. Like, that was really a lot of adrenaline involved, you know. Like, yeah, not, not everyone really... can say that they did something like that. <laughs> It, it was really cool. Yeah, I, I, I learned. I learned a lot. I, I, I saw a different world. Sure. So it, it kind of added to the CP of, of myself a little bit. Okay. All right, so and you, then I switched into finance. Crazy. Yeah. That was really crazy. Yeah. And after that, just on the brink of it, like I, one month after I joined the army, boom, uh, the world is on fire. I was like, okay, great. That's a good sign, guys. You shouldn't have let me in in the first place. Maybe I'm the reason. So, you know, yeah, I, I think Tunisia was, maybe I was the mistake that you guys did and spent the whole entire Middle East. Like, I yeah. blew it up, you know, I, I blew it up. So, it was like great. And then I started into finance. I became an FX and money markets trader, more of a technical trader. Okay. I started teaching as well. I was teaching, teaching. finance, portfolio. Yeah, uh, I was teaching investment management, portfolio management, and technical. Uh, analysis and trading so I was a more of a technical trader maybe because of my mathematical and engineering background so I have a statistical mindset so I was okay. more of a technical uh, technical um, uh, trader and a portfolio of fund manager so I used to do the prop desk trading for some prop desks and back in the days you know in the, in the wharf in London so okay. the guys used to trade for the Bank of England, Bank of China, Merrill Lynch, HSBC, Goldman Sachs, like you name it, like all these uh, 
uh, amazing traders on the floor. Like oh, we were treated like gods, you know, like I was, I was looking at these guys and shadowing them. I was like walking with the Titans, as they say. I was a, a little Titan walking among the giant Titans. <laughs> Yeah, so, but learning. So right? yeah, yeah, I learned a lot. I remember as well. Like, and then two years after, I was headhunted by hedge fund trading group in Maryland, in the U.S., to start oh, wow. a, a hedge fund in the Caribbean, in Dominica, in 2012. At that time, most of the bankers didn't know what really a hedge fund does, and some of them couldn't even point the Caribbean on the map. You know. Okay. So uh, it, it was really it fun, but yeah, the world has changed. So which, uh, uh, like, I, I kind of I can say it like I started the hedge fund from scratch. I built it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And we were at that time, like I was looking at these guys. I was like, as if I'm in a movie, you know, like, you know, all these Wall Street guys and BlackRock guys and the mm -hmm. New York Stock Exchange uh, derivative traders and the... Uh, lawyers from Malaysia and Hong Kong, you know, from the Asian side, because this was most of the derivatives and the structured and the exotic products were uh, developed and traded. And oh my God. And we had the operations based out of Colombia. And the company is a, is a Maryland based hedge fund trading group. And the hedge fund was in Dominica and the Caribbean, of course, because of taxing purposes and legal, sure. regulatory. Uh, whatever, and we were linking SMEs to capital through IPOing. Okay. So we would IPO and list the companies on the NASDAQ and hold the shares as collaterals and make the market. Okay. Wow. And we trade the shares on the so market. You get so we make, uh, that Living was like really life. cool to play that kind of game and to, to see how it's done and to do it yourself. Like, you know, like, hey, guys, we know how to collect the money. We know how the market's done. So let's just play that. Hmm. The CEO was a 14 years experience in derivative trader on the New York Stock Exchange. So when you, when you trade derivatives, it's totally different uh, story, especially hmm. when you go into the mathematics and the structure of it and the, all the Greeks and all the, you know, the, sure. the calculations that we used to do and the, all this kind of thing. It was really so much fun. I was doing this with a lot of passion because I was learning. And this time when I was hunted by the CEO of HTG Group, I was at that time revisiting Saudi again. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't in an entrepreneurial stage. Uh, I, I was just, just started a couple of businesses that I uh, I started with some of my best friends and childhood friends. So I had an, an FMB business, mm -hmm. which was a a barista academy and a, a distributor for some of the brands, and it was a walk-in morning uh, cafe, brunch, bakery, and. A, and a place, but I, it was just I, I did it for myself. I first started it as a, that I wanted to build a place where I personally would like to sit and invite my friends to okay. sip coffee and pull the strings of the conversation. Then I got this uh, franchise from Mr. Presto Academy Florence that they want to open an academy to train baristas. So we used to train. We were Bro, making uh, sorry, the one moment you're in the you're in the Caribbean. Uh, <laughs> and a hedge fund trading derivatives, and the next moment you're in Saudi with a no. I was in I was in Saudi revisiting Saudi after all this craziness, okay. and I was revisiting Saudi during my entrepreneurial uh, life stage where I had a, a retail um, uh, retail fashion business and the F and B business. So uh, I, 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 I got to, like, the, your 20s or something. yeah, okay. that was after the army, after the army and the, okay. the stuff I got to my friends that I partnered with and we opened a retail business for ca men casual wear. So uh, we were manufacturing footwear in China, leather goods in Turkey and jeans and shirts in Egypt. And we were like wool selling and distributing them all over the country. Okay. Bes beside our retail uh, store. And then I decided on the side of that, I was helping one of my college colleagues from engineering uh, with his IT company. 
So I was a usability engineer and information architect and doing business development for web development, ERP, CRM design, mobile mm -hmm. apps. So I went into the whole journey of the, you know, the usability, readability, ergonomics, the information architecture, the prototyping of apps and iOS and, and the very early days, you know, of designing ERPs and CRMs and, and, and all these applications for companies and doing all the, uh, the desktop and mobile applications and web portals for, for companies in different sectors. And I partnered with these two best friends of mine in the retail business, in the fashion and the retail fashion. We were manufacturing and wool selling. And then I decided to do something by my own, which was this FMB, the Barista Academy, and uh, the uh, franchise, the official distribution for, um, for, uh, for, for cafes. So I was the official distributor for Hagen does, if you're German, so the ice cream. Uh, for uh, I don't think that's a real Italian. German ice cream. I think that's a little bit of a brain. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> so I was ahead. official. Yeah, I, I went into this kind of thing. I was official shooter of Hagen Das of Illy, the Italian coffee beans. Okay. Uh, the Fornetti, the the Italian bakery, Boncola, the French tarts, and, and La Roche, thin, the, Fre so the French syrup. Yeah, it was it was cool. I actually did it by luck. I just had this. Uh, store next to my uh, fashion retail business mm -hmm. and i just said like i would just make a, a place where i would love to sit i would okay. just make no, a I will, shop I'm just laughing, my this, own this way awesome, uh, but how do you get into crypto <laughs> well i i got into crypto that was totally a different story like after that i exited my uh, fashion retail business i sold my 33 percent uh, share to one big merchant for 25% profit and I decided to close my my FMB business which was more was was consulting you know like okay. the, the third the business line for us was to be an FMB place we were just distributors for this brands which is uh, I just mentioned and we were training baristas at Starbucks Costa Sofitel and supervising the operations at these cafes and, and hotels and doing HR consulting and HR supervisory for the FMB uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So I decided to, to 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 close that business and make a management contract to another company because I wanted to to, to, to it was tying me. So I wanted to be a little bit more free and travel and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then back came your roots. the yeah. Exactly. Go again on another surfing the waves, you know, like back in the days when, mm -hmm. when my Wall Street uh, mentors you used to just like, you know, they were like, I, I think like we were living the life, you know, you just take the surfing board and they were just going to San Diego to surf the waves all day long and all that matters how many waves have you caught today. You just keep mm -hmm. counting the waves and, you know, and they do all this road, you know, Seattle, San Francisco, the, the, <laughs> the okay, whole so route up there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I shifted to totally left all of this and uh, started doing some private equity deals, some VC deals, but not in technology. Okay. Not uh, sorry, not in Web three technology, not in the blockchain technology. It was tech, but there is no blockchain involved. And this was part of me finance. I was a CFA instructor, the chartered financial analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, credentials. So I was teaching a lot to to uh, CFOs from uh, sovereign funds, from private equity firms, from investment banks, from commercial banks. And this is how I used to get my clients. The people that I was teaching them how to do business. So we know each other on a, on, a, on a knowledge, practical implementation level. So mm -hmm. this is how the trust came in. So I was doing all these structured deals, investment banking deals, private equity mainly, and then venture capital kicked in, uh, but there was nothing crypto, nothing blockchain at all until I got one email in 2018. Okay, so this is the crux moment. 2018, you get the yes. email and, and X. Then X happens. I can't wait to hear about X. Exactly. So I got this email, mm. and I was like, oh, okay, this email inviting me to Dubai for some private meetings and dinners with investors and startups okay. from Europe and the US and stuff. And this email is inviting me to be in Dubai the, the next week for two weeks. 
for these six private meetings and dinner, one one meeting and dinner every other day. So one day yes, one day no, and you meet every day uh, of these days, one or two uh, startups. Okay. And uh, most of them were from the US and Europe, and you have like eight to 12 investors uh, on each dinner or meeting over the course of two weeks. And I was like, okay, this email is just popping in my inbox right now, asking me to come next week to Dubai for two weeks. I've and never been to Dubai know before. Who was from? I, I will tell you the, the story, how it, how it came. Like, okay. I, 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 I didn't know the senders. I didn't know the company that sent me this, uh, this email and stuff. But it was, like, interesting. You know, I was like, I don't yeah. know. I, I just, like, literally saw this email. I went on Booking.com, Skyscanner. I just booked my flight, booked it, the, the, the nearest hotel to the airport in Dubai because I didn't know anything about Dubai. I haven't been to Dubai before. The only thing I knew about Dubai was Burj Al Arab and Burj Khalifa from the pictures and the ads and the commercial that you see on the TV and the internet. But I have, I have not known nobody, and I know nothing about Dubai. But I just packed my 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 luggage, my bag, and I just traveled. It's the same mm-hmm. way when I went to London. It was the same thing. I just packed my stuff and just jump into the the I, new country I, and I, I start making it there. Thing. Yeah, when I did it to Lebanon in Beirut, it was the same thing. I just jumped there, and then I get out of the airport. I would figure it out where to stay and what to do, and mm-hmm. maybe buy everything from scratch again. So, and th- 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 this explains the, 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 the period of my life when I used to change schools every semester and every like. It's okay, so, like so, so what happened? Uh, Tell me. Yeah, that's what what happened is that on the first two weeks when I arrived in Dubai. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like literally out and about all these two weeks. I, I rarely recall a time when I really went back to the hotel unless I'm dead, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm just you know, going to sleep and stuff. So I was like out and about finishing these meetings and dinners, going to almost every conference or every event or every happening, stepping into every hotel and building and meeting everyone and his dog, you know, like literally, as they say. Sure. Uh, I went to all the events that was happening. The city was buzzing and vibing, and not just technology and Web3. I was going to aviation, industry, manufacturing, wood, uh, furniture, mm-hmm. conferences, health, food, you know, like everything. But the company that, as I told you, these this meetings and dinners was focusing on blockchain and crypto. The startups who were pitching on these private dinners in the evenings and nights mm-hmm. were crypto and blockchain. Of course, I knew about blockchain and about Bitcoin because back in the days when we were doing this, uh, when we started the hedge fund and the CEO wanted to start mining. Okay. Back at that time. So we got into the mining things of Bitcoins and blah, blah, blah. But when I came to, to Dubai in 2018, years after, and I saw these startups, they're talking about the blockchain technology itself as a database technology or a distributed ledger technology. Not about Bitcoin, especially. Of course, there were some who are focusing on Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. So I started like paying attention more, and I say like, okay, this falls in line more or less with it's 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 a still VC, still tech VC deals. Interesting. So the, your your angle into the blockchain and crypto revolution really was this email, and the, whoever sent that email was or, oriented on the space. You come to Dubai, you see a whole bunch of different companies, not just blockchain, and crypto, everything. But this is your first kind of deep dive. Yes, it sounds like. Exactly, exactly. So over these two weeks, I started like talking with the CEOs and the founders of these startups, talking with the investors that I meet every other day on these uh, meetings and dinners, mm-hmm. and go, hanging out with these people, knowing them on the personal level. Like we, we, we go after these dinners for a couple of drinks and then like talk about life, go visit them, see them and their families, hang out a little, mm-hmm. uh, dine together, you know, like, so I... And then while I was there, well, one of my uh, friends who was starting a new uh, brokerage company or an investment bank in Malaysia, and they wanted to open a branch in Dubai, accidentally is texting me, hey, bro, what are you doing? I said, I'm in Dubai. He said, what the hell are you doing in Dubai? I said, I have totally no idea. I just got this email and I just packed my stuff and I jumped, I'm just here. It was literally the other day after I arrived in Dubai. Like mm-hmm. I just arrived, woke up and 
he said, okay, I have one very big client with some very big portfolios. We're managing this. I'm going to assign you as the fund manager on this big uh, Emirati client. Tomorrow you're at his office, like, uh, talking with him. Mm -hmm. I went to talk with him and his partner, Mm -hmm. and he was talking about tokenizing his business. Oh, yeah, that that conversation happened a lot. (laughs) Yeah, that was two thousand. Whether it makes sense or not, that conversation happened a lot. Uh, yeah, and he used to work for the ESCA, for the Emirati Securities and Commodities Authority. I sat down with the head of the issuance and disclosure of the ESCA, two thousand eighteen. You know, the first ever conversation with the Securities and Commodities Authority was with this guy because he was the head of the foreign affairs of the ESCA. His cousin was the head of the issuance and <laughs> disclosure of the ESCA. And they were still shaping the what is blockchain, what is ICOs, how we can have this into the financial system of the country, how can we embed this into the, the strategy of Dubai, what does it mean as an ICO or or all this kind of new funding or capital raising yep, structures yep, yep. and it, it was exciting. You know, you're just new in town and you're the first one to step into you, the Your life is crazy. Federal just authority, yeah, and the federal authority of the country. Before anybody, like, anybody else was just like, I was like, what the hell is that? Like, I, I barely, like, just stepped into the country, guys. Like, I'm just yeah. li- literally two days here and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting with all these in Abu Dhabi. Like, I was like, that was crazy. And then he was talking about tokenizing his business. So I said, like, okay, we can we can do that. Let's let's see who who are the best people that we can hire mm-hmm. to do this. He said, okay, you want a partner in that? I said, okay. He said, okay. So I will assign you in this. You're gonna be the head of that. You have full authority, full delegation to do whatever is necessary. Mm-hmm. Just the, and, and I did the I wrote the first white paper that I ever did oh, wow. for a okay. business and that was really extensive because I had to go through and not just the business side but also the technical side the blockchain layer side and even the legal the legal side of of, of uh, and there's no of there's business. no real law yet so it doesn't make life exciting <laughs> I had to see the the regulations or the uh, declaration mm-hmm. the compliance rules that we had to make in every country Amazing. So the U.S., Europe, China, Australia, there was a lot of legal notices and disclaimers that have to make in mm-hmm. accordance with every jurisdiction's uh, laws and regulations. And still, there is no clarity about blockchain and crypto, you know, so it was, it was very critical. Oh, in 2018, very there, there's crit- minimal clarity. I agree. Now it's a little bit better. That was very critical, yeah. And at that time, University of Cambridge were producing this, like, logistic... Uh, every year about the regulations everywhere in the world on this kind of so I had to go through them and I had to go through the ISSA in Switzerland and get their, their commentaries and papers and con- yeah. regulation so I was like oh my god now I'm going into this business legal as far as, as well I, I think my business fashion so you, 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 you bring just a little bit yeah, I, I say no. Uh, I was like, you're, back then when your I went connection there. is breaking up a little bit. Yeah. Now it's good. Yes, I don't know what happened. Okay, who knows? Yeah. So, uh, for for the record, back in the days when I was doing the retail and the F and B business, I studied a little bit of law. So I got my merchant law credential, not criminal or civil law. So I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Not yeah, I'm a licensed and I am allowed to legally practice uh, uh, well, arbitration. Let me ask you, did, did you successfully tokenize this guy's business? No, we successfully uh, did the, uh, the, 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 the business is our, you just need to change the model into this kind of technology. And this was, I came to Dubai in August 2018. Yes, we started this re started this in uh, in September, one month later. Okay. So I came in in August for these private dinners, and this this company that was inviting me was still a two three month old company. Oh wow! Okay. And they invited me after two weeks of these private dinners and meetings. They said, "Hey, 
it seems that you're very well connected. Have you been like, are you born and raised here? I said, hey, no, guys, I've just been here for literally just more than one week. And the CEO was like, whoa, you're, you're, you're more connected than a 40 year old person who's living here. How do you know all these kind yes. of people? I said, I, I just happen to know them. And a lot of them were connections even from other parts of the world from my background. So I started calling everyone I know on the planet and say, hey, guys, you have to come and see the city. This city is crazy. Like I always, uh, I, I was always like saying, uh, New York is international, London is global. When I came mm -hmm. to Dubai, I said, "Whoa, Dubai is universal." Universal, good word. That, that's universal. This is beyond. You, you, you brought your network to Dubai, bro. Like I met people from Alaska. Can you imagine that? You don't meet them in the U.S. <laughs> uh, I know, like you don't. You don't. <laughs> you don't meet Alaskan in the U.S. I'm not I sure if I've ever met Dubai. an Alaskan, but okay. Yeah, I met them in Dubai, so it was just insane. You know, they're meeting literally everybody, and everybody's traveling to the city. So I started calling everyone I know all over the world. Guys, you need to be here. I'm not coming back. I'm not going to London. I'm not going anywhere mm -hmm. until they kick me out of this country. I'm not going anywhere. So I stayed. And started working on this. We started tokenizing it. We started putting the model. We started getting the technical team. We started like having people working in place, mm -hmm. uh, cybersecurity, legal operations, banking, finance. Sitting with some big families and real estate people who would fund uh, the business to take it to the to the to the global scale and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. And then boom, COVID. Okay, fun. That's right. No, really? But what is, what you, came, you, got, you got your email in 2018 and you're doing all this August stuff. August 2018, yeah. Okay, and, and you, you tell me that the tokenization of this guy's business got hit by COVID or, or just in general? Uh, in, when COVID hit, he had to shut down the business. Wow. Because, because it was based here in Dubai, the office, the operations, the everything, and he was working in the government in Abu Dhabi. Okay. And when COVID came, you know, with the lockdown and the stuff, and only God knows what other internal issues that he had on personal level, family level, fair, government fair level, fair. work level. So w w he had to shut it down. And I was like, okay. But at that time, I was not just only doing this because, like, I, I had my, my my own office with my own when I'm running my own meetings. But this company that invited me for these dinners in August, they were hosting their first ever cryptocurrency conference in Dubai in September. And which was that? So that that was called the International Cryptocurrency Investment Congress. Wow. Okay. Serious. Seriously. And they invited me, yeah, and this invited me to stay until the next month for their conference. Okay. And they said, if you know that much people, why don't you invite a couple of these guys? And I invited my partner, who was this local guy, they said, why don't you invite him to speak? I said, okay, I will invite him to speak. I introduced the CEO of the company to him. And while they are discussing what kind of panel he would be on and the topic, they said, hey, I'm a, why don't you moderate the panel? I was like, okay. Sure, why not? <laughs> you see, the, just one month after I'm in Dubai, like, mm -hmm. I said, okay, I will moderate the panel. And I happened to be on this panel with an amazing person that I hold as a very dear and close friend up until now. Uh, this guy's name is Pranav Sharma. I mean, now well, running the, yeah, who is now running the Woodstock Fund. Okay, so, sure. I've been part of their journey like since their first fund when they were still raising okay. the Amazing. first half a mil or one mil for the fund and look at where these guys now are. Like so I'm so proud of the people that I know because I can just like people say, Hey, I know this guy, he's my friend, you know. I've I've been part of his journey in some way. And this uh, conference after it was very successful. I think everybody who was on the radar of blockchain back in the days globally mm -hmm. was talking about this conference because it was the first of its kind with this name, International Cryptocurrency Investment Congress, in 2018 during the hype of ICOs and all this kind of it. So people who even missed it or didn't know about it, they heard about it even after. Okay. And that was the birth 
of the flagship world-renowned global blockchain congress that you hear about now by Agora Group. Interesting, which, that by the way, I am, the I'm the MC of that. Yeah. Wow. It was an amazing journey. And then I started my journey with, with, with Agora. We became very good friends for a year. Uh, I was almost attending every single conference they do, every private meeting, every business briefing. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to take a picture of us for Hadi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just texting him yesterday. He's in Hong Kong now. Wait, yeah. Hold on. I'm breaking, I'm breaking the port wall here. <laughs> okay, Hadi, we're recording a live show right now. And what are we, hey. what, what, what are we talking about? We were talking about the first the Global Blockchain Congress, the International Cryptocurrency Investment Congress. Uh, amazing. So here we are. Hadi, this is going to be on my YouTube channel forever. And the fact that we're talking about you and you and Ahmed, the, 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 the wonderful magic you created in 2019 or 2020 or so. 2018. That's 2018. 2018. Wow. Real early. And for everyone watching, just so you know, I'm the MC of this upcoming blockchain conference by Agora. Yeah. Very small. Now you're emceeing it. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Wow. Yeah. I'll send that to Hadi afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So, so you... yeah, and that was the what that was the beginning of it. You know, I started inviting speakers, uh, inviting investors and stuff, and uh, and then I started teaching again. A couple of consulting and training houses here in the UAE. I don't know how they knew uh, about me uh, here in the UAE. One of them was a UK company. The other was a local company from uh, Knowledge Park here. And mm -hmm. they asked me to do some training for some banks on uh, banks. Credit, credit assessment, uh, commercial banks, normal banks, you know, like, uh, on credit assessment, on Islamic finance. And then one bank requested a blockchain for banking. So I was like, oh, okay. As a, as a topic, Block, that's fascinating. Okay. Block, yeah, as a, as a training course for their staff. Mm -hmm. That was 2018, you know, because st still learning about the stuff, but because I was engaged in this thing, and then and then I got some FX and treasury training for one central bank, and then one ministry was asking for a one-year consulting on blockchain and digital transformation across five departments in the, and I was like, okay, so Dubai every month keep pulling me to stay, you know, like by things happening like that. Yeah. I know this so I'm, I'm just saying, just saying, and then I was headhunted by uh, the MBF establishments. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually started working for them before, before I was even hired by them for a couple of months, the Mohammed bin Rashid Foundation, and I yeah. built and structured the healthcare fund for them. And crazy. Uh, that was crazy, yeah, pretty crazy. And then I, I, uh, and then Hadi, that you just, that, that he just told me, hey, Ahmed, we have been friends for almost a year now. You've been almost attending every single event of ours. You're helping us literally. And I don't know what's in it for you. And I have no idea what you do, what, you, what you're doing, what you're, mm -hmm. well, probably you're very busy and have your things to do, but why don't you but... work with us? like okay that sounds fun <laughs> okay you know i i didn't realize that you and him were so well connected with with each other yeah i mean wh where did i meet you where did we meet yeah do you remember oh my was god at an agora conference wasn't an agora conference but later on I think in two thousand. Uh, definitely later on, because I, I I came here and visited at the end of two thousand twenty, and but you know r right off the bat in early two thousand twenty one, I hooked up with Hadi and Agora, and I that just... was twenty twenty one. That was my last day with Agora. Oh so my I gosh! Stayed maybe, maybe on your last I... day was my first day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so probably something like that. So because I started with with uh, with Agora in twenty. Like since 2018, since I first came here, I came here, yeah. here because of one email that they sent to me. So I'm in Dubai because of Agor. When there were still a three months old company and there was not even still a conference yet, you know, there was just like doing these meetings and dinners and still of their first ever conference. It was not even called Global Blockchain Congress, it was the International right. Cryptocurrency Investment Congress. And then we decided to change branding to the global blockchain congress 
And then later on, they added on the other sectors like the Cybersecurity Congress, the Healthcare, Healthcare. Disruptors Congress, the Education Disruptors Congress. There is plans now to pull off the Legal Tech Congress and the Energy Congress as well. Yeah, <laughs> so it was only Dubai. And now we're do they are doing Saudi, London, Vietnam. You, you, they're, you, you they're might hear, and they're very nice. Yeah, you, you might hear about a US version of the Global Black Chain Congress soon. Oh. Breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> so, not, yeah. Not for me. I like it so, in the Middle East. They so, are amazing. They, to be fair, just because, you know, normally we do background and then we do what someone's working on, but you, your background is so fascinating. I just kept it, let it roll and roll and roll. But I just want to make sure we cover, you want to talk about Disrupted or what you're doing right now, just so the audience can know? Uh -huh, okay. So a couple of years after I joined Agora and we started running the, the amazing Global Picture in Congress, uh, I think that was the best experience in my life. I was dealing with the best CEOs. Hadi is a good CEO, you know. Yes. And I'm a good one, you know. So, <laughs> okay. So, I'm just teasing him because he's going to be watching this. So. He's going to watch this <laughs> twice. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, after uh, I started engaging with other conferences as well in uh, sustainability, in uh, renewable energy, and some deal clubs in New York, in Europe. So I was on the organizing committee and on the advisory board and the uh, founding members of other deal clubs and conferences in, uh, in other places that would, they would just like ask me for to, to pull off the entire PR campaigns. Some of the largest media campaigns ever in the tech sector uh, I, I did w along the sides of other uh, amazing people. Uh, and then I, 2021, I decided to step off all of these. Uh, you know, we, uh, we came to an end in our okay. business relationship, uh, me and Agora. I, and then I decided to step off the organizing committees of other conferences and other uh, clubs here and there, just to, not to create any conflict between them and each other. And I decided to start my my own journey, which is disrupted. Okay. That you have been asking about from the beginning. I just this wanted, is how I, just I came to get in all the, the way. Yeah, because sure. you said I let's take you, it. You know, <laughs> yeah, so I decided to to to, to start disrupted, and it it, it, it it just stuck in my mind um, like this, you know. So, um, so what's the fundamental idea behind disrupted? Well, the fundamental idea behind Disrupted that I wanted to take it to, 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 to the next level. Meaning... Okay, which means what? Uh, What's your vision? What? My vision was like, okay, we had this amazing model in Agora Group. Mm -hmm running this model that nobody has seen before in the region when they first started. Everybody was fascinated with what they are doing. Everybody's asking why they are so successful and how can we be part of that? Mm -hmm. uh, and through my engagement with other uh, conferences and other um, uh, events globally as well, I was like witnessing and seeing the pain points of the people on the ground. During my time with, with, with Agora, I was the only man on the ground here for the consistently. I never left, you know? Yeah, yeah they're, they're so, based in Lebanon and then they kind of come in for the show. Yeah, the, the, the operation team, they are all in Lebanon and stuff. They, they, they come here a couple of days before every Congress and leave a couple of days after. That's I was the only man on the ground whole year long, you know, established the government's media strategic partners, building the database of the investors, the Altar Network in people's funds and everything and everybody was like why is Agora so successful and how can we be part of it and mm -hmm. I was like okay but I don't want to do something only blockchain you, you do or you don't. I, I don't want to do it only blockchain okay. and uh, crypto I want to do something that will bring the entire tech spectrum together Okay, so and here Disrupted like, is, okay. A, is a whole tech conference. Is that, is that true? As a whole tech summit. And I think um, I did a mistake calling it a summit. Okay, what is it? Because it's, it's a fusion of a VC hedge fund accelerator pro. Okay. So actually, 
the disrupted experience or journey starts at least three months before disrupted itself. So yes. it's, it is held only once a year. Only God knows where and when. People uh, okay. get to know about it after it's already done. So they, they read a press release about what happened three, four months ago. Like, oh shit, we missed it. You know, mm -hmm. it just it's just passed. And only once a, once a year we do it. And it starts at least three months before because we start the whole year working on onboarding and uh, choosing the enablers, what we call the enablers, whether they are the startups or the investors or the governments or the industry leaders from corporates or corporate VCs or whatever. And each one has a specific tailored bespoke package. So there is a startup package, there is a scale-up package, there is a VC package, there is a government package, there is a, a university and not-for-profit package as well. Okay. And, and we start three months before doing all the due diligence, the uh, term sheets, the investor relations. We even got like some, some enablers who got their investment meetings with the investors before the summit happened and they traveled and closed a couple of deals and they never showed up at the summit. Like I was like, okay, guys, I'm happy to take your money. Like, but you think, well, they should show up at the summit just to tell everyone how good it they was. Didn't show, it they worked. didn't show up on the summit. I was like calling them, guys, you need to be on the stage now. And they said, hey, we're in Singapore with this guy you put us with and he signed the check. So thanks. We're going back to Switzerland. I was like, so you're not coming to Dubai? They said, no. I said, about your sponsorship, they said, we're happy. And I was like, okay, that's easy, good money for me. And I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> you just money. decide. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, most of the enablers that I have, they come on a second and a third time, you know, like, because they see the stuff. So we, we start we start before the summit doing all the investment banking and the, and the lead investors things. Okay. From putting people in touch together, sending emails and Zoom calls, WhatsApp groups, putting everybody in touch together, sourcing and filtering and matching the, the people together, introducing them to each other, starting the conversations a couple of months before Disrupted, sending the term sheets, working with the startups on the ter their term sheets, on their pitch decks, yes. on the what they need to change on their websites or their messaging, their branding, their everything and we put them to uh, starting to look into the thesis and the mandate of the investors their portfolio whether they are investors or lead investors or what and we do the entire uh, investment it's like having a mini goldman sachs in your pocket you know this is what we do for the for the I, 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 yeah, yeah and, right. and then everybody flies in yeah for the disrupted summit, they knowing each other, they have been talking together, they have became friends, they are coming to see each other for the first time face to face, shake hands, close a deal, sign a check, or discuss things further, or maybe pick up a fight, you don't know, you know, like, <laughs> it just goes how it goes, and we are there on the ground to orchestrate this. And then after the summit, which we book the accommodation for everyone, we, mm -hmm. everybody's under the same roof, we throw three parties over three nights, okay. everybody's staying together, dining and wining together, you know, having fun and, and talking about the last 10% that they couldn't manage over this period of time, they are coming to shake to talk to. And after the disrupted summit for three months, we do the follow up on this deal and we do the PR and the marketing for not us. So most oh, of the news that you offer. read on Bloomberg, on, yeah, on Business Insider, on Market Watch, on Benzinga, on Bloomberg, on Yahoo, on all this news, tech crunch, like, you know. This is crazy because all your all your experiences before, including the EDM event production, yeah, including the HR, maybe even including the, mil the Egyptian military service, somehow helps with this. It all came together. The, it love all came together. <laughs> now, I will tell you something. Remember when I told you about that I started to switch into business and study business and do MBA? And mm -hmm. I, I, I started to do the, my MBA in Edinburgh Business School in Scotland. And I dropped while I was doing my financial trading and FX and stuff. And I did continue my master's in financial engineering. 
-hmm. I didn't continue my MBA. I dropped and I did my master in financial engineering. And I designed the first algo trading systems for Wall Street hedge funds back in 2016. Okay. When, when, when the very early beginning of the guys at Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs propped crypto trading desks before the regulation, before everything started, like, they were still, you know, like, doing all this research on the algo trading, the algorithm trading of, of cryptos and arbitrage and high frequency trading and all these kind of things. So that was part of uh, of, of, of my uh, season of my yeah, bro, Brother, we, we are so over time. I just want I just want to get the headline. Yeah, I think yeah, we're in there. We're so we're, you're you're three times my normal interview, but it's okay. This, <laughs> this I, I I think I kind of want to land. I want to land the plane. So you have this amazing conference, disrupted. That is like all good conferences. It's not just the dates of the event, but you have the lead up. Is well organized. You're connecting people, and then afterwards you have the follow up. And this is annual. Is it in Dubai? You're on mute. I can't hear you. You're on mute. Say something. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying we do the follow-up and we do the marketing as well. It's like having a media perhaps who work, what works for you. So we're starting the new all over the world, and if not about bragging ourselves, but a lot of the news that you read on the internet, on the social media, the groups about startups and deals, and we put this news for this in our hour. Don't the news about ourselves, we put the news out because they enable us. To they pay for the show, so we run over them. I like it. And, and, and brother, I'm sorry, your your signal's breaking up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was thinking that I do the marketing also. Mostly of the articles of the news that you read about startups and deals and stuff that get about all over the internet on Benzing, on Watch, yes. and it's inside Bloomberg, Yahoo. We put this news for all these startups and enablers of ours. So we, this is part of the follow-up and the marketing and the PR disrupted. That's why I'm still calling it a summit because it's a media powerhouse and an investment bank. It's much more than a summit. In a, it's much more than a summit. I, I couldn't come up with a name then when I, when I started it. Like, what should I call it, you know? <laughs> it's, it's the nexus. Uh, maybe, maybe we can uh, yeah, call it disrupted nexus. Yeah, here, see, maybe you should join us, bro. You should join. Hey, man. <laughs> uh, you're getting yourself a job here. Okay, great. Uh, that, that, that's dangerous. Uh, okay, so <laughs> my, my friend Ahmed, we, we, we got to stop because we're at an hour and 15 minutes. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I really appreciate your time. You know what? I there's so many layers to you that I didn't know about. So much stuff, stuff you've done, so much you're involved oh, in. I didn't oh, know. thank you, bro. I'm Thrilled you took the time. I feel like I feel like I got a new friend here. You know, this is you're cool, and you're like you're like motivating me, jazzing me up. And I think you will for the for the. Oh my god, that that's you, know, huge, bro! We're, Thank we're, you. And we're gonna tease Hadi <laughs> endlessly now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna tease that. All right, cool. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. So I'm gonna put all, I'm gonna put all yeah, your yeah, contact yeah. information, everything for disrupted in the show notes, so everyone can see it. Okay, audience, sure, thanks for sure. sticking with us. That was amazing.